prosecutors want to seek the death penalty for the man accused of killing 11 people inside a Pittsburgh synagogue. That suspect will be in court for the first time tomorrow. But tonight, people focused on the victims, the innocent lives taken in a close-knit Jewish community. They were honored during a vigil in Pittsburgh this evening. Police released the victims' identities this morning. They ranged in age from 54 to 97, and they included a couple that was married in this same synagogue decades ago. Now, the accused gunman has been identified as this man, Robert Bowers. He has a long history of anti-Semitism. Police say he told them right after the attack he wanted to kill Jews. Well, those words of hate have only strengthened people's resolve to encourage love and peace. We're a resilient people. We will work together as one. We will defeat hate with love. We will be a city of compassion, welcoming to all people, no matter what your religion or where your family came from on this earth or your status. Tonight, there were vigils held around the world, from Pittsburgh to Paris. And a memorial service is planned for tomorrow right here in central Indiana. The Jewish community inviting people to come together in solidarity with the victims. Our Alan Carter tonight reports on their efforts to overcome this act of hate. A nation continues to mourn. With words from my mouth, I love you. Coming to grips with the tragedy in Pittsburgh that took the lives of 11 worshipers at a synagogue. Bigotry will not win. Hatred will not win. The Empire State Building going dark in remembrance of those victims. With vigils held Sunday across the country and the world. David Rosenthal. Services were also held in Canada and in France. We believe that when American Jews, when French Jews are targeted because they are Jews, it's a matter for all the citizens. The truth is that we are not even six degrees of separation away from events that happen even in Pittsburgh. We talked with Rabbi Brett Kirchhofer Saturday after the killings. He heads Indianapolis's largest Jewish congregation and they plan to hold a service of their own on Monday. We also have already heard from many of our interfaith partners here in Indy we are unfortunately we're used to gathering when attacks happen to one minority or another of us. He says it's an open house at Indianapolis's Hebrew congregation for people of all faiths, for remembrance and solidarity. I hope that we can be inspired by the unity that will surely follow this event. I hope that we can once again gather and show that the, the voices of peace, the voices of interfaith dialogue, the voices that call us to be our, our higher selves will drown out these, these uh, voices of hate. It's really the only hope that I have right now in my heart other than just grieving. In Indianapolis, Ellen Carter, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. And that memorial service is planned for tomorrow night at 530. It's at the Indianapolis Hebrew Congregation at 65th and Meridian. My family does know a lot of the victims. My sister um, knows all of them. Man who lives in Carmel says his heart is with his family in Pittsburgh tonight. His mother and sister still live in that community where he grew up, where 11 people were killed on Saturday. Matthew Tobe's mother goes to the Tree of Life Synagogue most weekends, but she did not this week. Instead, she was on lockdown inside her house, just blocks away, worrying about her friends. So she was on lockdown during the event, not knowing, you know, what was going on at her own synagogue. You know, to live here, but to have my heart there, and, and you know, it's tough. And at many times, uh, it's tough for me not to be with my family, but at all times right now, especially, I, to not be with them and to just be able to give them all hugs is really, really tough. The Carmel area experienced anti-Semitism this past summer. That's when two people spray-painted Nazi flags on the garage at the synagogue.